This is an example problem in which I'm given that a car of mass 3,000 kilograms is subjected to two forces which are detailed in this picture above. Force 1 is 450 newtons at an angle of 10 degrees left of the vertical, or at least as this picture is drawn. Uh, F2 is 400 newtons, 30 degrees to the right of the vertical <coughs> on this picture. And I'm asked to find the resultant force, um, and I'm actually to find the... I'm asked to find the resultant force vector, which means I will need to find the magnitude and direction. And I'm asked to find the resultant acceleration of the car. Uh, so as a first step, I have written down everything I've known, and I've assigned them symbols. Uh, F1 and F2 have symbols already. I've assigned symbols to the angles, so I don't have to carry those around. Uh, that's not strictly required, but I like to do it because I just don't like numbers. So the first thing I'm going to do to answer what the resultant force is, is I'm going to notice that uh, I don't have a nice pretty right triangle between these two forces, right? I can't apply Pythagor the Pythagorean theorem to the forces as I have them here. So what I have to do is break them down into components and add their components uh, piece by piece to do it. <clears throat> so, if I'm going to break F1 down into components, I notice that as this picture is drawn, it's uh, directed in the positive y direction and the negative x direction. So that's going to be important when I assign my signs. Uh, the y in this case, notice that this is oriented a little differently than you're probably used to. But the y, the way we've defined that angle, the y is going to actually come through the cosine of that angle. Remember, the cosine is adjacent uh, over our hypotenuse. Normally, we think of that as the x component, but in this case, because of how we've drawn it, that's actually going to be your y component. So I'm going to write that F1y is equal to, and this is positive because I'm going upwards, F1 um, cosine of, what have I called that? Angle alpha. That's not a 2, it's an alpha. And F1x is equal to, now this is going to be negative because it's the component is directed to the left. F1, sorry, negative, negative F1 sine alpha. I can do the same thing on F2. Notice these are both qu positive quantities. F2y is going to be F2 cosine of beta. And F2x is going to be F2 sine of beta. So don't get hot. Don't get hung up on cosines and sines being associated with x's or y's. They're associated with adjacents and opposites. And what that means uh, is dependent upon how your problem is set up and how your picture is drawn. In this case, it's backwards from what we expect, but that's okay. All right, now to find the resultant force, I just need to add these component by component. I'm going to go to a different page to do that. And I'm going to, I'm going to call my resultant force just F. I've called the other ones F1 and F2. This is just going to be F. And the magnitude of that will be... Uh, and let me say that, sorry. The X component will be... Let me look at what my X components are. Looks like it's F2 sine beta minus F1 sine alpha. F2 sine beta minus F1 sine of alpha. My y components, these are both positive. I have f1 cosine of alpha plus f2 cosine of beta. Let me make sure I got that right. Yep. Uh, the positive f1y, positive f2y. I just add those together, and I get this. So um, I'm gonna, I'm going to assume that I can just plug this into my calculator and get some numbers because I know what all these things are. Uh, but that doesn't actually tell me what my resultant is, right? The magnitude of my resultant, and let me just show you what what we've done here. As we, we have come up with a force which looks a little bit like this. And I have no idea if I've drawn that correctly. But the idea is this is F. This is F of X. and. Let me point out, f of x could be directed the other way. I would actually have to run the numbers to find out if it was negative or positive. Uh, I think it's going to be positive. So I'm going to um, just draw it this way. If I run through the math and I get that it's actually negative, I can always remake my drawing. That's no big deal. 
But at any rate, what I found is this. So f of x here is this entire quantity. It's the resultant force that comes from adding up the, component of the components of the vectors I'm given. Fy is this quantity. And if I were to be doing this in a problem, I would actually stop and put these numbers into my calculator. In other words, so I would, and then I would assign f of x to whatever number that is, so that I can continue to solve this symbolically with just f of x instead of dragging around this whole f2 sine beta minus f1 sine alpha. That's a lot to write. Uh, so I would stop and I would solve that, and I would assign that to fx, and then I could um, continue my problem with my symbols. Let me get rid of those lines. But that's, that is, where am I going here? Yep. That's what I found, is that I have this right triangle, which I can now solve using the Pythagorean theorem. Um, so I have Fy and Fx that I've solved for. I can apply the Pythagorean theorem to get the magnitude F. I can also apply um, the inverse tangent function to get the angle. Now, you might ask yourself, what angle do I actually want? And that's going to depend on how I apply my inverse tangent. I'm going to pick this angle, right? I'm going to call this my angle theta. And so when I calculate it, I'm going to calculate it in this manner. Inverse tangent of Fy over Fx is equal to theta. And that will return that angle. And when I describe it, I will have to say then... That the, ang that the force F has a magnitude of some number that I've calculated uh, directed at an angle, which is theta, above the horizontal. Um, I, I could calculate the other angle here and talk about uh, directed at some angle to the negative of the, hor or negative of the vertical, but I think it's easier to calculate the theta as I've drawn it and talk about it being uh, directed above the horizontal. And that would be sufficient in that case to determine the force and the magnitude. All right, sorry, the, the magnitude and the direction. All right, so the next part asks me, uh, what is the resultant acceleration? So, <clears throat> and it tells me to ignore friction. So I'm going to assume um, that it's, well, I think it's asking you for the magnitude, but it doesn't really matter because we're going to have to determine the magnitude as a step anyway. So from Newton's second law, which is what we're going to have to use to solve this, if I can just write that down, the sum of the forces is equal to ma, and this is a vector equation. A is always, 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 always going to be direct directed along the same direction as the net force. In other words, whatever we find as a direction over here, A is going to be directed along that same path. Um, specifically because the only way it could change direction is if m is negative, right? And that doesn't make any sense. The, the ne a concept of a negative mass is not something we have. And so a and f are always going to share a sign because m will always be positive. So a will always be directed along the line of the net force. So all that to say, since I've already have that, I, this, is, this is the sum of my forces. This is my net force. Uh, I have that, I have the direction, so I don't have to worry about the direction of A, I already have it. All I have to worry about is applying this equation to my particular system. So I've already summed up the forces, that's what I did in part one. So instead of the summation symbol F, I can just write F. And again, this summation F is a general statement, I'm going to sum up all the forces. This F comes because that's what I solved for, right? I solved for that right here. This is the uh, this is the quantity I got. Uh, so f. Let me erase these lines. Uh, and if I'm just worried about the magnitude, I'm going to leave off the vector sign. That is equal to m a. And I have a mass. I have that the mass is 3,000 kilograms. And so I can solve for the acceleration very easily as the result the magnitude of the resultant force over the mass. And so I'm going to again come up with a number. And when I answered, I would say that the acceleration vector is this number at uh, the same angle, at the same, not sine, at the same theta 
that I saw for over here. So however I characterize theta, in this case it was theta degrees above the horizontal, I would say the exact same thing uh, in my answer for acceleration.